In this video, we will be exploring surface anatomy and ultrasound of the knee, popliteal fossa, and posterior leg compartments. We will start off by looking at some important structures of the knee joint using a plastic model. Then we will move on to surface anatomy. We'll look a bit further into the borders of the popliteal fossa using surface anatomy as well. And finally, we'll move on to ultrasound to find some important structures of the knee joint. This is an anterior view of the plastic model of the knee joint. You should be able to identify the following structures. Femur, quadriceps tendon, patella, which is a sesamoid bone within the quadriceps tendon, the patella tendon, the lateral collateral ligament, the medial collateral ligament, the tibia and the fibula. Now that the model of the knee is in a flexed position, we can identify further structures. The lateral condyle and medial condyle, the posterior cruciate ligament and the anterior cruciate ligament, and finally the lateral meniscus and the medial meniscus. We will now move on to identifying some of these features on our patient. You should tie in this information with your knowledge on how to perform a knee examination to identify some common pathology. The following structures can be palpated on the knee joint. Femur, quadriceps tendon, patella, and the patella tendon. Then with the knee flexed slightly, we have the medial joint line, medial collateral ligament. Likewise, on the opposite side, we have the lateral joint line and lateral collateral ligament. The popliteal fossa is a diamond shaped fossa at the back of the knee, which runs surprisingly deep. This is how major structures are able to pass between the thigh and the lower leg. If we get our patient to turn over, we can start identifying the borders of the popliteal fossa. There are four borders which make up the popliteal fossa. Superior medial, you have the semimembranosus. Superior lateral, you have the biceps femoris. The inferior medial border is the medial head of gastrocnemius. And the inferior lateral border is the lateral head of gastrocnemius. The popliteal fossa acts as a conduit for structures passing from the thigh to the lower leg. From medial to lateral, these structures are popliteal artery, popliteal vein, tibial nerve, and the common perineal or fibular nerve. Why is the popliteal fossa important? Well, swellings at the back of the knee can suggest different pathologies, and two of the most important to remember are Baker cysts and popliteal artery aneurysms. A Baker cyst is a swelling in the back of the knee that often presents in middle age and in conjunction with, with osteoarthritis. It is caused by inflammation in the semimembranosus bursa. It often presents with a chronic ache at the back of the knee. However, if the cyst ruptures, it can cause acute pain and swelling of the calf. This can mimic a deep vein thrombosis, and it's for this reason that a DVT must always be excluded in a patient who presents with a Baker cyst rupture. A popliteal artery aneurysm is caused by dilatation of the popliteal artery. This can present similarly to a Baker cyst, but it's less common. You can identify a popliteal artery aneurysm by auscultation of the popliteal artery in the popliteal fossa with the audible bruit. Ultrasound can be used to help identify structures within the knee. However, the cruciate ligaments and the menisci cannot be visualised well due to the presence of bone which reflects back ultrasound waves. We can see the suprapatella and infrapatella fat pads as well as the quadriceps and patella tendon using ultrasound.
To identify the quadriceps tendon and the suprapatellar fat pad, I've placed the probe in the transverse position superior to the patella. And I've tracked the probe slowly, just distally, down the leg until I identify this image that you see here, which I will freeze. In this image, you can identify the quadriceps tendon, the suprapatellar fat pad, and the patella. We will now move on to demonstrate the medial and the lateral collateral ligaments. To identify the medial collateral ligament, place your probe in the coronal plane on the medial aspect of the knee joint across the medial joint line. If I freeze the image, you can clearly see this band of tissue which represents the medial collateral ligament. I now unfreeze the image and move my probe to the same surface on the lateral side. Again, if I freeze the image, this band of tissue represents the lateral collateral ligament. We will now move on to the popliteal fossa and ask our patient to lie on his front. I've placed my probe in the transverse plane of the popliteal fossa to identify the popliteal artery. Popliteal artery is represented by the pulsation you can see in the centre of your screen. I can apply Doppler to this. Doppler gives you a visual and audio representation of pulsation through the popliteal artery. We hope you enjoyed this video on anatomy of the knee, where we covered basic musculoskeletal features using surface anatomy and ultrasound of the knee, popliteal fossa and posterior compartment of the leg.